Hey everyone, it's Lance with Christianity Minute. Welcome back to our study in Luke, episode 34. Jesus has begun his ministry and is beginning to branch out from his home area. He leaves his hometown after they, well, they wanted to throw him off a cliff, and he settles for a little while in Copernicum while while there he masses a following. Uh, And we've also met Peter, who's likely a friend of Jesus at this point, given how close they are in the future, and a small event in today's passage. Well, Jesus has finally decided to move on to continue spreading his ministry after many an effort to get him to stay here at Copernicum. Jesus will begin his journey by the sea, and he'll pick up his first true disciples in our passage today. But before we begin this journey with Jesus, I want to say thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to leave a like, and for more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. If you'd like to help produce these videos, please donate through the links in the description. Also, if you feel like this video might be of benefit to someone that you know, you can share it with them using the share button below. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to look at Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 1. We're going to go all the way down to verse 11. So let's read. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of one of them and were were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked them to put out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. (sighs) But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partner in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled up both of the boats so much that it began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. What a beautiful passage. It's almost cinematic in its writing. Okay, let's go through it step by step. We're going to draw some things out. First, let's talk about this lake. (laughs) You have to remember that the ancient world was much larger than it is today in terms of information and local knowledge. This is still the Sea of Galilee, although they called it the Sea of Gennesaret. If Jesus would have went around the western shore for about, oh, four or five miles, few hours walk, he would have arrived at the city of Gennesaret. But given the context, he likely has not left Copernicum yet. We know this because Peter, remember, you know, his other's name is Simon. We're just calling him Peter because that's what he called him later. But at this point, he's still called Simon, is still in this place. And we know he hasn't really begun following Jesus yet because this is still his regular place of work and therefore it's most likely still his home. We also see evidence of the familiarity with Jesus since it's really no big deal for Jesus to just board his boat and begin preaching. What is Peter doing at this time? You know, it really doesn't say what he's doing while Jesus is preaching, but I really imagine him, and of course he's finishing cleaning the nets, and he begins to listen to what his friend has to say. Peter believes him, after all, and believes that Jesus was sent from God, evidenced by the previous faith that he showed by bringing him to his mother-in-law. We don't have Jesus' sermon actually recorded here or in any of the other Gospels, unfortunately, but we do see 
that Jesus will do this many times. He'll board a boat and he'll use the reflective properties of the flat surface of the water to project his voice to the crowd. What he said is less of our concern since it's not recorded, but what we care about is what he does after he's done. Remember, the fishermen were all out there washing their nets, so they were done. (laughs) And since there was a crowd, it was possible the crowd could see that these men really hadn't caught much of anything. Fishing was kind of a big deal around the Sea of Galilee, and Zebedee, we see from secular history, was a name in the local industry. We'll see from the biblical record that he has at least two boats here. He employs Peter and his sons and at least three others in the other boat, all whom were likely experienced fishermen. Experienced fishermen who knew how to read the water, how to cast their nets, and quite frankly, they didn't come home empty-handed. But here they were. (laughs) And to add insult to injury... Everyone had come to listen to this preacher man. And, well, they all knew how the fishing went. Then Jesus says something that's pretty unexpected in verse 4. Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Knowing Peter as we do from reading our Bibles, I imagine him to be exasperated. (laughs) His frustration is seen as he tells Jesus that he and other professional fishermen had had a bad run. They didn't catch a thing, (sighs) but he'll go ahead and do it since Jesus asked. You know, I can imagine just what's going through his head. Does he have faith that the fish will come just because Jesus said so? Uh, Or is he thinking how dumb this is and how embarrassed that he is? It's impossible to know if his faith actually wavered or not. But it might have, given verse 8. We'll get to that in just a second. Whatever he was feeling, though, whatever he was thinking, it wouldn't have lasted long, though. Because sudden panic (laughs) is about to take over. He casts the nets off the boat, and the nets are so full of fish that he has to get help from the other boat. The nets are even beginning to break. These boats were about 50 feet long, and they were intended to haul a lot of fish. But the catch today was so enormous that they were sinking not only the first boat, but the second boat as well. What a catch. What a miracle. You know, I imagine Peter had been one of the men who, at the end of the last chapter, had been begging Jesus to stay there at Copernicum. But Peter just couldn't take this anymore. Jesus had already told him that the message of God had to be spread. And Peter couldn't be selfish and faithless any longer. He comes up to Jesus, he falls to his knees. And asked Jesus to leave. This message, this miracle, it needs to be spread to the whole world because it's the truth of God. He had proof of it. It had now been shown to him twice, up close and personal. And Peter knew that he was not worthy to be Jesus's. James and John were there as well, sons of Zebedee the owner of this big fishing business. And they were just as taken with Jesus at what he had done. They were also likely to have seen the miracles before this one. But this miracle was more than healing a wound or an infirmity or something of that nature. This showed that Jesus could control nature itself. And then what Jesus says is also unexpected again. He calls them with a simple phrase. He says, Do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men. Your Bible may say you'll be fishers of men. Either way is fine. Jesus is telling these men who would now faithfully follow Jesus all the way to their graves to follow him. Before this moment, they were simply catching fish to make a living. From now on, they would catch men for the gospel You know what they did? They dropped everything 
and immediately started following Jesus out of town. You know, Jesus did something in their lives and in their hearts that day. He showed them what's important in life. And sometimes we lose that perspective. Do you know what's important in your life? Peter, James, and John, well, they all had a lucrative career. Peter had family members to take care of. Jesus, though, was now going to become more important than all of that. He was going to come before all that. He was God in the flesh, after all. These men knew what they had to do. You know, it may sound cruel to us today, but sometimes family or work or any number of things that they seem pretty important to us. In fact, they are very important, but they really need to be put second. Nothing at all matters if God is not yours. Now, I'm not saying that we should be neglecting our family or our job or the other things that are important to you and your life. That would be foolish. But we have to keep our priorities straight. And maybe we can all examine ours today. That's been your Christianity Minute for this week. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. I work very hard to make sure that all things said are scripturally accurate. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in that comment section below. And I'll see you next time right here on Christianity Minute.